Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I have a very special guest speaker for you guys. He is Miu Prime Math, and he is about to graduate from high school, and he will be going to Caltech and study mathematics. And I really like the way that he explains the math because it's logical, clear, and concise. And today, he's going to show us how to solve this crazy big sum. And if you guys enjoy the way that he explains as much as I do, then you can go ahead and check out more of his videos on his channel. I will have the link in the description for your convenience. And now let's welcome Mu Prime Math. So we are going to do the 2017 Putnam problem B4. Evaluate the sum from k equals zero to infinity of three times ln 4k plus two over 4k plus two minus ln 4k plus 3 over 4k plus 3, minus ln 4k plus 4 over 4k plus 4, minus ln 4k plus 5 over 4k plus 5, where ln denotes the natural log log base e. Now, when I see this sum, there's not much that we can immediately do to try to evaluate it directly. So instead, what we can do to approach this kind of problem is think about whether the form of this summation reminds us of something easier that we know how to solve. And one thing that this reminds me of is a telescoping sum for the natural log. Now this sum itself does not telescope because, for example, we can't cancel natural log of 2 over 2 with natural log 3 over 3. So there's not much we can do there. However, consider if instead we had the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of natural log k over k minus natural log k plus 1 over k plus 1. If we call this inside here a sub k, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of this inside, well, that's going to look like this. For the first term, we'll have natural log 1 over 1 minus natural log 2 over 2. After that, we would have plus natural log 2 over 2 minus natural log 3 over 3. Then plus natural log 3 over 3 minus natural log 4 over 4, and so on. Notice in this case, the natural log of 1 is 0, so this will go away. Then for natural log 2, it's being both subtracted and added, which means that these will cancel out. The natural log 3 over 3 will cancel out. There will be a natural log 4 over 4 somewhere in here that will cancel out as well. And then we'll go all the way to natural log for some value of a partial sum n. We have the natural log n over n minus the natural log of n plus 1 over n plus 1. And this is if we take the sum instead of to infinity, say we take the sum up to n. In this case, there will be a minus natural log n over n in here as well, so that would cancel. And our telescoping sum just becomes minus the natural log of n plus 1 over n plus 1. As n approaches infinity, n plus 1 is going to grow much faster than the natural log of n plus 1. And therefore, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity, this is going to go to 0. So I'll write here, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub k equals 0. So now we've solved a much simpler version of the sum that we're looking at here. But like we said at the beginning, this sum is not going to telescope as easily as the sum of a sub k does because these terms are never going to have the same value in the natural log. It's always going to increase 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so there's no opportunity to cancel. However, if we can try to reframe this more difficult problem in terms of the simpler problem that we already solved, then that will enable us to make some progress. And the reason when I look at this sum in particular that I think that's possible is because we have three times a positive term and then we have three negative terms, which makes it seem like we might be able to combine these in terms of our function a sub k because we have one positive and one negative term here. So let's see if we can do that, rewrite this sum entirely in terms of a sub k that we understand better. Now we know, let's call this sum s. And we want to figure out what the inside of this sum is equal to in terms of a sub k. In order to do that, we're going to first need 3 times 
the natural log of 4k plus 2 over 4k plus 2. But if we want to write this in terms of a sub k, we're also going to need a minus natural log of 4k plus 2, and then plus 1 will be 4k plus 3, and then over 4k plus 3. After that, well, we've subtracted three times this natural log here, but we only want to subtract 1. So we're going to need to add two times the natural log of 4k plus 3 over 4k plus 3 to balance that out. With these two together, we just have a minus 1 of that natural log. But since we've added this, we're going to need to subtract in order to have it in the form of a sub k. We'll need to subtract natural log of 4k plus 4 over 4k plus 4. And then from here, notice we've subtracted two times this natural log, but we only wanted to subtract one. So we're also going to have to add the natural log of 4k plus 4 over 4k plus 4 to balance it out. Now we just have a minus 1 of this. And then finally, in order to put this in terms of a sub k, we need to subtract natural log 4k plus 5 over 4k plus 5. And now, like we said before, since there are as many positive terms as negative terms in this summand, what we see is there's only minus 1 natural log of 4k plus 5 over 4k plus 5, just like we need in the sum. Which means that if we expand this whole thing out, it's going to be exactly equal to the inside of our sum. And now we can rewrite this as 3 times, what is this on the inside? Well, it's going to be a sub 4k plus 2. See that natural log of the inside over the same thing, minus the same, but we add 1 to the input. After that, we'll add 2 times, what is this inside? Well, it's going to be a sub 4k plus 3. And then finally, this last part is a sub 4k plus 4. So now we've completely rewritten our original sum over here entirely in terms of a sub k. Now we have to think about how we can get from here to some actual value for the sum. And in order to do that, there's not quite a clear path yet, so we're going to need to do some more examination of the different parts of our summation to see if we can put things together to further simplify the problem. In order to do that, take a look at the insides of each of these parts. For this first section, we have the natural log of 4k plus 2 over 4k plus 2, minus the natural log of 4k plus 3 over 4k plus 3. And down here, we have the same thing, but for 4k plus 4 and 4k plus 5. Think about what would happen if we took the insides of each of these parts and then wrote out a few of the first terms. Say we started at k equals 0. For k equals 0, on this first part, we're going to have the natural log of 0 plus 2 is 2 over 2, minus the natural log of 3 over 3. And then over here, we're going to get plus the natural log of 4 over 4, minus the natural log of 5 over 5. After that, we can go back to the start here and plug in k equals 1 for the next part of our sum. Then we'll have 4 plus 2. That's going to be 6. Get the natural log of 6 over 6, minus natural log 7 over 7, plus natural log 8 over 8, minus natural log 9 over 9. And now that we've written this out, the form that we see here is much more familiar. If we take a look at natural log 2 over 2, minus natural log 3 over 3, that's a sub 2. Natural log 4 over 4, minus natural log 5 over 5, that's a sub 4. This part is a sub 6. This part is a sub 8. This is the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub 2k. That's a sub 2 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 6 plus a sub 8 and so on. So this gives us a lot of information about how we're able to simplify the expression that we have here. If we take a sub 4k plus 2 and add a sub 4k plus 4. This is the result that we get. So I've written the information that we had here about the sum of a sub 4k plus 2 plus a sub 4k plus 4. But if we look 
at the sum that we're trying to find right here, there's clearly still some parts remaining. So let's take a look at what we have left. If we take this sum that we have here and take out a sub 4k plus 2 plus a sub 4k plus 4. If we take this part out, what we're going to have remaining is, well, we took out one copy of a sub 4k plus 2. That's going to leave us with two a sub 4k plus 2 left. And then we also have this term that we didn't touch at all, which is 2 times a sub 4k plus 3. And so this is the part that we have remaining. As soon as we can figure this out, we can go back and solve for our original sum. So let's take a look at what this sum is. If we write out 2 times a sub 4k plus 2 plus a sub 4k plus 3, that's going to look like 2 times the natural log of 4k plus 2 over 4k plus 2 minus the natural log of 4k plus 3 over 4k plus 3. That's this first term. And then we add the natural log of 4k plus 3 over 4k plus 3 minus the natural log of 4k plus 4 over 4k plus 4. Notice on the inside here, 4k plus 3 and 4k plus 3, this minus and plus are going to cancel out. And we're just left with these two remaining parts. Notice also that both of the denominators here are even. So we can distribute this 2 in and make these denominators a little more simplified. This is going to give us the natural log of 4k plus 2 over, if we bring this 2 down, we're going to be left with 2k plus 1. And then over here, minus natural log of 4k plus 4. And then we bring the 2 down, we have 2k plus 2. Notice in each of these cases that the input to the natural log is double the denominator. But we know a rule about natural logs, which is that we can actually split up multiplication inside the natural log. In this specific case, if we have the natural log of 2 times x, that's equal to the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of x. And we can apply this rule to what we see right here. That means that this is going to equal, on the top here, we can take the natural log of 4k plus 2 and turn that into natural log 2 plus natural log 2k plus 1, all over 2k plus 1, and then minus natural log 2 plus natural log of 2k plus 2 over 2k plus 2. So in each of these, we can take out the factors with a natural log 2 in them. So that's going to leave us with the natural log of 2 times 1 over 2k plus 1 minus 1 over 2k plus 2. And then we're going to be left with these two parts. The question is, what is natural log 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 minus natural log 2k plus 2 over 2k plus 2? That looks very familiar. In fact, it's exactly equal to a sub 2k plus 1. And so this is all we're left with when we look at what is 2 times a sub 4k plus 2 plus a sub 4k plus 3. And with this, we have all the information that we need to get back to our original sum. So now I've written the piece of information that we just got right here on the board. And now we're ready to move on to the final part of getting this sum. We know that the sum we want is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of this expression that we have right here. And we've also shown that that's equal to these two parts put together. So our value of s is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of what we have right here. But we know the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of each of these parts. So we can split it up and look at each part separately. That means that we're going to get s equals, first, this sum on the inside, that's just the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a sub 2k. And after that, we have this part here. Now when we write this part, I'm going to put the a sub 2k plus 1 first, just so that we can put it next to our a sub 2k. So we have plus the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of a sub 2k plus 1. And then finally, we're going to add this sum right here. 
the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of natural log 2 times 1 over 2k plus 1 minus 1 over 2k plus 2. So let's start by looking at these a sub 2k and 2k plus 1 parts. And one way that's really helpful to get an intuitive understanding of what these sums are going to look like is to actually write out the first few terms. So let's see what that's going to look like for each of these. This sum with a sub 2k is going to give us a sub 2 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 6 plus a sub 8 plus dot 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 and so on. All of the even terms. This sum with a sub 2k plus 1, well when we plug in k equals 0, that's going to be a sub 1. And then we'll have plus a sub 3 plus a sub 5 plus a sub 7 plus dot 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 all of the odd terms. If we put these two sums together, we're going to have a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. We're going to have every single term a sub k, all the way starting at 1. And what is the sum from 1 to infinity of a sub k? That's 0, which means that these two terms right here, those are going to cancel out exactly to 0. We don't have to worry about them. All that's left is this final sum at the end. We can factor out the natural log 2 to the outside, and now we'll use the exact same technique that we just did. In order to understand what's going on, let's write out a few of the terms. This is going to be plus the natural log of 2 times. What is this on the inside? When we plug in k equals 0, we're going to have 1 over 0 plus 1 is 1 minus 1 over 2, then plus, when we plug in k equals 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, so minus 1 third, plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 5, minus 1 over 6, and so on. This sum on the inside will look familiar to anyone who studied their Taylor series. And that's because we can write this as the natural log of 2 times the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 over k. And that is exactly the Taylor series for the natural log. The natural log of 1 plus x, if we evaluate it with this x to the k, when x equals 1. So that means we're looking at the natural log of 1 plus 1, which is the natural log of 2. So we have the natural log of 2 times the natural log of 2, or in other words, the natural log of 2 squared. And since everything else in our sum was 0, this is our final answer. So all this craziness going on with these natural log expressions, that infinite sum just simplifies down to the natural log of 2 squared. And the way that we got here was through two important techniques. First, when we started with this sum, we didn't know exactly what to do to start. So we first looked at a simplified version of the problem, where we did this easier a sub k. Once we solved that, we thought about how we could reframe the more difficult problem in terms of that simpler problem that we'd already solved. That got us some progress. In order to get to the final answer, we used one other very important tool, which is visualization. Whenever we have an abstract idea, like when we're doing an infinite sum with these kinds of complicated terms, it always helps to write out a few examples, or in the case of a sum, a few of those first terms, to understand what the expression looks like. From there, we were able to realize it was just a Taylor series, and we got to our answer.